what is going on everybody hope you had a great thanksgiving hanukkah whatever it is you celebrate uh, today's video is going to be how to replace the front pads and rotors on a 2002 to 2006 toyota camry also i would will post um these tools if i can find them as well as the parts in the video description if you purchase them online also don't forget your thanksgiving bloody now it's worth noting that there's a couple different styles. These are the 16 inch wheels because it's the XLE model. Um, there are 15 inch wheel variants as well, which you will have different part numbers for the brakes and pads. So double check that before you order anything. Um, I'm not sure what the 15 inch wheel lugs might be. They could be a three quarter. They could be the same as these. Um, I suspect those ones would be a three quarter or a 19 millimeter for the lugs. These are a 21 millimeter. So we're gonna go ahead and crack those loose before we jack up the car. Now I'm using my cordless Milwaukee so I can go ahead and jack it up, then crack them loose. If you're using a breaker bar, you gotta do it before you jack up the car. Uh, then place a jack underneath the frame member here and jack up on it. Never a bad idea and highly recommended to uh, put a jack stand just a little bit behind it on the same frame member to support it in case the jack fails. These are kind of goofy lug nuts. I've actually not seen this before. They got like a little washer on them and a guide pin. Huh. Now we can go ahead and remove the wheel. If they're stuck on like mine is, go ahead, give it a good old donkey kick. Now you may notice we're actually on the passenger side now and that's because this is the side that's metal on metal. So that's the side that I wanted to film. Uh, it's kind of pointless to film both sides since it's the same steps. I'm just gonna film the one side, save you some time. Now, if you want, you can do what I'm gonna do, which is just turn the key to the uh, accessory position or the on position, but don't start the car. And I'm just gonna turn the wheel so that the caliper is facing outward so we can get to the bolts a little bit better. All right, so now here's where the saying comes in, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, the proper way to do this would be to um, leave this alone, unbolt the caliper, and then not compress the caliper piston until you've cracked the bleeder. That way you get all the old brake fluid that's in the caliper out, and some fresh fluid can work its way in. Um, but being that's an older car, I don't want to risk breaking the bleeder and we're kind of pressed for time so i'm just going to do it the typical old school way which is where we're just going to compress it and push the fluid back in uh, there's two methods you can do to this one people like to come in like this with like a pry bar or a flathead and just kind of pry between the rotor and the pad like this to create a little bit of a gap that'll help get the caliper off um, and then once we get it off, we can use a C-clamp or the proper tool to compress the piston. So we're gonna have two caliper bolts to remove. Uh, you can remove just one and then pivot the caliper up. Here we go, pivot! 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 But I like to take them both out because we're gonna take the slide pins out, make sure they're not seized, clean them up and lubricate them because that's how stuff like this happens. You see this side's metal on metal. The back side is still fine. That means that the slide pins were probably not moving correctly. And that's why one side wore out prematurely to the other. Uh, for, the, for this bolt and this bolt, you need a 14 millimeter. And I believe this is a 17 millimeter, but I can't for sure tell you because this is why we hate engineers. The wrench is too fat. It hits the shoulder on this bolt and the caliper. So I can't get the wrench on there. It looks like a 17. I'm gonna have to use uh, my Crescent wrench, which has slightly skinnier fingers that can just barely grab it. And we're gonna go ahead and hold it with this and loosen the 14 mil. All right, both bolts are removed. Now we can use a pry bar, flathead, whatever you have handy, and just kinda pry against the caliper bracket here to get it popped out. It should come fairly easy if you uh, pried the shoes or the pads over like I showed earlier. If you're having a hard time here, um, try what I did. And if you're still having a hard time, that may be an indication that this caliper uh, piston is getting seized and you may need to replace it. There we 
go. Set this up here. Now I like to take like a bungee cord or something, wrap it around the caliper, hook it on the strut or the coil just to keep the caliper from falling down. You don't want it hanging from this rubber uh, brake hose. It can rip and then you're gonna be doing more work. There we go, caliper hanging with a bungee. And now we can go ahead and remove the pads. Might be able to do it just by hand. So there's our culprit. Nothing left of that one. Uh, this one's got some left on it. So we're definitely gonna be, you know, it's not a lot left, but we're still gonna check out them slide pins. This is how they should move. They should move freely and be able to spin a little bit like that. Nice and fluid like. This one is a little stiff. So we're gonna take them both out, clean them up, lube them, put them back in. Now at this point, you could basically just remove these retainer clips, put the new ones in, slap your new pads on and put everything back together. If you're just doing a pad slap, but since we are doing rotors as well, shh, too much traffic. Since we are doing rotors as well, um, we're gonna remove the caliper bracket. The caliper mounting brackets are here and here. They're also 17 millimeter. Caution, loud noise. There we go. Now, you should be able to just pull the rotor off. Of course, it's not that simple, so we're gonna have to hit it with a hammer. There's probably a little bit of rust build up here on the hub or the bearing. I wasn't asking. <laughs> All right, there we go. You can see there is some rust build up here. So I'm gonna take like a wire brush and just try to clean it up a little bit. Never hurts to put a little anti-seize there too, but I don't have any handy, so this will have to do. Another thing you wanna look for here is make sure that this um, mating surface here for the hub bearing is nice and flat. If you see any like rust scaling or build up or anything weird, um, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and like brush that or, or grind that flat um, so that the wheel sits straight. Um, this one looks good, except for this one little spot. The rest of it is rest of it's pretty flat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this ring like I was doing before, and we can go ahead and put the new rotor on. Now, as I said earlier in the video, there are multiple different rotors and pad sizes depending on what wheel size and engine size you have. Uh, they're very specific on that, so Definitely take your old one, match it up with the new one. I like to take them and kind of do the one of these numbers. Make sure that the lug pattern, the lug holes line up, and then set it next to the old one. Make sure that the the hat, that's, that's this part, make sure the height of the hat is the same on both. And then flip it over and make sure that the diameter of the actual rotor is the same, which it is. So it looks like we're good here, which is great because if these were the wrong parts, I'm gonna guess the auto parts store is probably closed on Thanksgiving. So the next step is to use some uh, brake clean, carbon choke cleaner or soap and water with a rag or a towel. And we're gonna wipe off the face of the rotor here as well as this face here because they usually put a small amount of shipping oil or grease on it to prevent them from rusting. You want to get that off before you put this together so your brakes actually work. <laughs> now with all the oil cleaned up off the rotor, we're good to go ahead and put it in place. If you've cleaned up with the wire brush, should slide on pretty effortlessly. In fact, oh, see, that's why you got to have the bungee. Gosh darn caliper tried to get away on us. And then the bungee came loose anyway. <sighs> Just out to prove me wrong today. Anyways, back to action here. Um, <laughs> I cleaned it so well that it actually just comes right off. So <laughs> it's gonna be the wheel that holds that flat. So don't worry if you have this going on. Uh, and then once we get the caliper bracket and caliper on, that'll hold it more straight as well. So now we're gonna divert our attention to the caliper bracket. We're gonna go ahead and take these clips out 
should just be able to pull them out by hand. Otherwise, um, you can use like a screwdriver to pry them out. I guess before you go ahead and rip the old ones out, make sure that your new pads come with them because some really cheap kits do not and you have to reuse these. You know, I, I prefer not to, but it beats not having them at all. Looks like ours do come with new retainer clips. And as with the rotors, I like to match up my pads. Make sure that they're about the same size, same mounting tabs and everything. All looks good. Now right here in this little shoulder where those clips were riding, if you had a hard time getting them out, it's likely because they were very rusty. Uh, I recommend taking like a file or the wire brush we used earlier, just kind of cleaning them out a little bit. That'll help put things together. You, you know, it, if you just kind of force everything together all rusty, you're going to be beating it and swearing at it. So a little bit of t extra time here will save you time in the end. Now I know there's other videos showing how to do brakes on these, but anytime I fix anything, I make a video just because uh, other people have different preferences and ways of doing things, some better, some worse. So it never hurts to watch a few of these types of videos just to know what you're getting into, even if it's something as simple as pads and rotors. All right, got it all cleaned up with a wire brush. Looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but definitely good enough. So in addition to the new retainer clips, the new pads also came with the little squeakers. So when the pad gets low enough, it'll kind of make a horrendous noise. That way you know you need to replace them. The way to put these on, as you can see, there's a little groove right here. And you can see the pad material is facing that direction. So we want it to go this way. The rounded part here will face opposite of the pad material. You may need to use a hammer to tap these on. Otherwise, just kind of push on and clip like that. Now you can see this little finger sticks out just a little bit, probably an eighth inch beyond this metal backing plate. So when your pad gets down to that level, say here, this is gonna contact your rotor and make a really nasty noise and that'll let you know it's time to replace these again. So now you'll need to replace or repeat the same steps for the other three pads. Now, obviously you gotta think a little bit here. So if this pad, you can see it's got a slight curve to it. It's going this direction, okay? So then you gotta have one that curves the same direction that has the pad material facing it because it's gonna pinch the rotor. The rotor goes between these two like that. So this will give you an idea. Now, if you got your clip here, that means we need to put the clip on the top of this one and again, make sure the little finger is facing inward towards the pad material. Uh, so we're gonna put this one here and then we're gonna do the same for the other side. There we go. Now, if you're having trouble with this or it's confusing you for whatever reason, these aren't super important. You don't have to put these on for the pads to work right. It's just a nice kind of like basically a dummy light for an engine light, you know, it just lets you know when they're getting low. You don't have to do it, they'll work fine without them. Now we'll go ahead and put our retainer clips in. It should be pretty self-explanatory. You can see the general shape here. They just kind of sit like this. As you can see, there's a little finger right here as well as here. That will help you kind of center it. And make sure you push it all the way down. You cannot see any air gap through here. Make sure they're pushed all the way down. Once it is fully clipped in, we will do the same for the top one. Now onto the slide pins. These are a 17 mil. I can confirm now that I can actually get the wrench on it. Um, we're going to want to pull these all the way out, which I'll probably need to put the camera down for because, you know, two hands and stuff. But if they're not wanting to come out, use a wrench, try to work them back and forth. Um, you may need to push this rubber boot off, which I can't do with these gloves, but it'll come unhooked from the slide pin. It just slides this way. And once you get the boot off so you don't damage it, you can come from uh, like this direction and hit it with like a punch or something. Clamp this in a vise if you can uh, and hit the, hit the pin to try and get it out. Sometimes you have to apply some heat here. If you can't get it out, no matter what, you'll have to get a new caliper bracket from the auto parts store. I ended up just using this little pocket screwdriver to kind of pull the rubber boot back. 
And as you can see, it's got all this nasty rust scaling in there that is not helping by any means. So we're definitely gonna get this pin out, clean it up. And there it is, got the pin out. If you have a bench grinder with a little wire wheel attachment to it, it'd be awesome to take this to it. Otherwise, you can do like I'm going to do and just use a little wire brush and a paper towel. Wipe off all the grease first with the paper towel, then take the brush to it and get any scaling off. All right, now unfortunately without a bench grinder, this is as good as I could get it with a hand wire brush. I wish I could get it better. Um, if the auto parts store was open, I would probably go get a caliper slide pin kit and just replace them because you can probably get a kit for about five ten bucks but they're closed so i did it the best i could and we're gonna go ahead and coat it with some lubricant i like to use sil glide i will show you in a second they also make i believe legitimate slide pin grease they call it but it's basically all the same stuff so we're going to do the same treatment to this one um, since these weren't completely seized, I'm not too worried. So they were already working okay, and I cleaned them up a bit, plus we're going to re-lube them. I think it'll be fine for one more go-around of pads. Uh, if they were stuck in there completely, I would replace them. Well, there's the second pin. As you can see, it's in much better condition. I like that. Also not a bad idea to take the caliper bracket. And you can see where the slide pins go in there. Put it like this, and just kind of tap it on the ground to get any loose debris or rust that might be in the slide pin holes out of there. Now we're ready to install the caliper bracket again. It's gonna go over the rotor like that. You can see our mating surfaces right here. So you can tell it goes on this side of the spindle. And this has the threads, so obviously the bolt threads into that. So it needs to go like this. And now we can reinstall our two 17 millimeter bolts. Now this isn't exactly necessary, especially if you torque the bolts properly, but I like to be a little over cautious and put some blue Loctite on uh, my brake caliper and caliper bracket bolts. I recommend using blue over red, just because red is high strength, blue is medium. And if you have to take this back apart, you might be cussing at yourself if you used red. Both bolts are started. We can go ahead and cinch them down. Now I didn't do anything too crazy there because I am gonna torque them down. I highly recommend torquing things like steering and brake components. Um, if you don't have a torque wrench, you're gonna have to use your best judgment. I believe the torque spec for these or bracket bolts are in the realm of 80 foot pounds. Oh, look at that. The number one setting on the half inch Milwaukee was spot on. Ah, my friend, the sun is providing some much appreciated warmth here. <laughs> um, so now we're ready to put the slide pins in and I don't know if my theory is correct on this or not, but my whole theory is that being in Minnesota, you know, road salt and stuff in the winter, I think this pin was in the bottom, the more corroded one. So if I put it in the top, further away from the road salt and all that debris, maybe in theory, it won't uh, get as crusty as quick, so. So this is the stuff I was talking about. They make different products, obviously, but this is what I use. Just need a dab like this and just kind of spread it around on your slide pin. I coated it even heavier up where the rust was in an effort to try and slow it. All right, now we can slide the pins back in, make sure that they move nice and freely, and then push them in and get the rubber boot back over that little shoulder. I was able to do it with one hand. Wow, look at that. Now the boot moves with the slide pin. Gotta do the same for the upper one, and then we'll be ready to compress our caliper piston. Oh, there's a few different ways you can do this. As previously mentioned, there's a tool that you can get that I don't have, of course, <laughs> because I do mostly truck work, uh, that sits in here like this, and then there's a little threaded rod that comes out, and it'll push on the caliper piston. You can also use a big set of channel locks, put your old brake pad in there, and go like this and squeeze. Otherwise, my preferred method 
is to do the same thing, put the pad there, and then open up a C-clamp and use that to push the piston in. Now you shouldn't have to force this too much. If you're if you're bending a C-clamp or you're squeezing super hard with a channel ox that size, which if you can't tell by the video, that's like a foot and a half long. You know, it, it, they might be a little difficult to push, but if, if they're not going, um, don't force it. You're just gonna damage it. You'll more than likely have to be replacing the caliper at this point. Also wanna pay attention if you wore your pads down so much that there wasn't a pad left and this piston was contacting the rotor, you should also be replacing it because more than likely it is not worn flat and it's damaged. Um, so I'm gonna compress this now. Of course, I will need two hands, so we'll see how this goes. You can focus on the boot. Zoom out a little bit here. Always a good idea to have the brake fluid reservoir cap removed for this because what you're doing when you're compressing this piston is forcing fluid back up to the reservoir, which is why you don't necessarily want to top off your brake fluid unless it's really low because as your brake pads wear down, the fluid level naturally goes down. Now, if you've done it correctly, you should have the piston all the way collapsed in. It should be flush with the body of the caliper. Uh, also look for any chunking out of this inner metal ring. If there's chunks missing, that's another sign you need to replace the caliper. We're now ready to install the new brake pads. Um, I like to, but it's not 100% necessary. Take the side, obviously, that does not have the friction material, so this side. And I use what's called like disc, disc brake quiet. Um, and you like you can spray it on or you can get the paste that you put on. It's just kind of a tacky substance that holds the pad to the caliper so that when you're going down the road, the caliper or the pad doesn't like fall away from the caliper like this and just like gently ride on the pad uh, on the rotor and create kind of a squeak going down the road. But being that these are ceramics and we have, the retainer clips and the fact that I don't have any of that product with me, we're just gonna put it together like this. I think we'll be all right. So always remember the pad material always towards the rotor. You would not believe how many times I've seen people mess this up and they have the metal facing the metal. It's not gonna do anything. So we're gonna go like this, pop that bottom little tab in. Actually, we might have to do the top first. If you're having trouble getting the pad in like me, it's more than likely because the rotor has shifted on you. So make sure that that is pushed in all the way. And then we're gonna go for round two here. Look at that. There we go. Pad facing rotor. Do the same on the inside. Now I don't necessarily know if it matters where the squeak pad thing uh, goes. I'm putting mine on the top. You do you. Just tap it in. Shouldn't have to go anything too crazy there. Um, basically, I was just fighting the retainers because once you get this pad in, it kind of makes this end of the retainer lift up and this one here went down so they were pinching together. So you kind of got to like push down on this retainer possibly up on this one after you get one side in. What I did was kind of pushed down on it with a screwdriver while I pushed with my hand. And then once I got it started, I just tapped it in the rest of the way with a hammer. You should not need to beat on it very hard. Otherwise, um, you may not have these seated properly or there's too much rust buildup underneath them. Now we are ready to reinstall the caliper. Make sure that you don't have a twisted brake line, as you can see right here, is a perfect example. It's all twisted. It needs to be flipped this direction. Also, the little air bleeder here should always be on the top side. So if necessary, push the slide pins in to help get the caliper on. Get it over your pads, like so. 
And again, I'm gonna use Loctite on the caliper bolts and I'm gonna torque those to probably 20 to 30 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna turn the ignition back on, straighten the steering wheel out so we can get the wheel back on. Now we're gonna reinstall lug nuts, which again, in this case with the 16 inch wheels was a 21 millimeter. Uh, the lug nuts, these little posts here, should help center the wheel. As you can see, the stud is not centered perfectly in this hole. It needs to get moved up a little bit like that. So make sure you don't just ram these in there. They need to fit centered properly. I recommend kind of jiggling the wheel, start them by hand, and then snug them down uh, before you drop the car down to torque them. All right, now that all five are snugged down, we can lower the jack down and remove the stand first if you have one in place. Now, according to multiple sources I found on Google, the torque spec for this is actually only 76 foot pounds or if you 80 foot pounds if you want to round up. That sounds low to me. I found that foreign cars like this typically have a ridiculously low lug nut torque for whatever reason. And judging by the size of the stud, I can tell you it can probably support 120 foot pounds without problem. Uh, so if you want to stick to the book, do the 76 to 80 foot pounds, do that. I'm going to torque them to 100 just because I feel like that's not quite enough. Now with a uh, five lug pattern like this, I like to do this one, then skip one, then this one, then skip one, then do that one, and then start up here with the one I skipped, and then back down to this one that hasn't been hit yet. I'm guessing the reason for low lug nut torque on this is because of the lug nut style. A lot of lug nuts are a conical fit, where it relies on the, the cone shape of the lug nut to center the wheel and keep it tight. That's probably how they're getting away with a lower setting but i just torque these all to 100 no problem no stretching no broken studs nothing um, again feel free to do what you want once you've torqued these in the star pattern kind of like i showed i usually go around one more time just to be safe and i recommend retorquing your wheels after 50 to 100 miles of driving now as you can see the brake fluid level is not ridiculously high here. We still have a little bit more room. We could probably compress the driver's side caliper here without any problem. But what I would recommend doing if your fluid level is higher is once you have the one side together, go in the car, push the brake pedal a few times. That's gonna push the caliper piston back out a little bit and your fluid level will go down a little bit. That will create more room for the fluid from this caliper to go into the reservoir. Now I'm not going to show doing the other side because it's the same steps as the side we already did. However, I will make this important note. Um, once you're done, you have the wheels torqued. It's back on the ground, off the jack, off the stands. Um, make sure you hit the brake pedal a few times because if you just start your car, throw it in drive or throw it in reverse, you're not going to have brakes right away because your caliper pistons are all the way compressed. And when you hit the brakes, they're just going to push out a certain amount and there's not gonna be anything there yet to grab the brakes. You don't wanna smash into something when you put it in drive. So definitely before you even start the car, hit the brake pedal a good five times, maybe 10 times until you get a hard pedal. Then start the car, do the same thing, hit the brake pedal a few times, make sure you got a nice solid pedal before you drive anywhere. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification button. Also check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching.